This is a very, very exciting day. Matter of fact, Niall walked in and said, my God, you guys are overly enthused. <laughs> Why are we overly enthused? Well, one is it's Friday. Yep. And two, Niall. I mean, this is a remarkable, probably one of the most memorable or will be one of the most memorable days of your career. Yep. The first solo album is birthed. And you get to spend it with us. Yes. Always a pleasure, never a joy. <laughs> now, 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 just to give people some uh, some perspective, when did you start working on your solo album? What was the first big um, I wrote this town in March or April last year. So from then on, really, um, obviously, I stopped to do a bit of promo for that song for the end of last year, but for the guts of a year. From You had tremendous fame and success. Were you nervous? But to be honest, at the start, there was no real, there was no real plan for me to do. Just jump, just do it. And obviously, me with me got bored after about four minutes of sitting around doing nothing. Just starting to write in general, and it felt like the songs that I was writing were coming quite like naturally to me. And first came this town, right? song you don't realize you know you when you're writing it you're like yeah we've got, we've got a good one here but you don't realize that how good it is compared to what the tracks are open and it's, it's a tough it is tough out there so to come out with a song like that and be of that size and stand out that much really like shook me and shot a few people what about what, what kind of what kind of if that song has to me specific influences just as an outsider but for you was what influenced you to cut, to get to that place? Because it is a unique sound for yeah. what's on the radio. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I was I wanted to make the album that I that was like full of all of my influences and stuff that I was I grew up on. And when I was I was coming towards the end of the album, like what I thought was the end of the album was like Last Christmas or something. And I was thinking to myself, I'm missing I'm missing something out of my influences. Yeah. So I started. To It's out today in just a second. 102.7. It's Kiss FM. It's called Too Much to Ask. It's yes. now 102.7. Kiss FM. Heartbreak. Look at all these girls, huh? I mean, you spin around in your chair. There's girls everywhere right behind you. He's waving everybody. Waving all the girls behind him. <laughs> all the other girls over there. Uh, but that, it, I mean, that, that's got emotion. That's got emotion. Let's go. 
Yeah, it does, yeah. I guess that's that's what Tanya just said. Oh, oh, that's why you don't drink to that hard to try. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we write these things. But I'm just thinking back when we first saw you come out on one of our stages and you did a couple songs or maybe a song. I was like, yeah. Yeah, you did like one, right? Yeah. And then you, but now you've got this whole this album, this whole body. Mm. How is the... Because being in One Direction was an intensity mm -hmm. uh, and a level of intensity, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Being a solo artist is an intensity, but a different intensity, I guess. How is it different? Yeah, big time. Well, in terms of making the album... I think the way we used to record stuff and write stuff was very quick. We were, you know, it was kind of stuff with timelines and deadlines. And if, yeah, but so this time around for me, I didn't have to rush anything. You know, I was given as much time as I wanted. I told everyone, it was pretty clear that I told, uh, with everyone, that I was going to take my time, make sure I had enough time to make mistakes. And uh, yeah, and, I, and I, I felt like if, because of that, I had time to make mistakes and I wrote some terrible songs and I wrote some good ones. And, um, I had time for all of that, so. Um, but there is a different intensity in other ways. Um, like the day to day, it obviously there's a lot more pressure on me, you know, in terms of like interviews and stuff like that. You gotta do it all you. It's all yeah. One man band. It's hard. It's hard to explain. I don't. Uh, I, I can't. I can't really think of like individual scenarios. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's all. It's all on. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's kind. It's kind of fun, you know. I, I, I really. I really enjoy it. You either like hide behind it all or relish it. influenced by anything kind of Southern Californian, you know, that whole Laurel Canyon area of Johnny Mitchell and Jackson Brown. And the did you ever get Jackson Brown? Oh my God, one of my favorites. Yeah. Did, did you ever, like, did you get in your car sometimes, making the album? Oh, no, just when you, just get it. Like, I remember when I first moved here, I would get in my car at night. And yeah. I I've done it. Down the floor by just let it soak in. 100%. I've got a couple of, on the album, I've got a couple of windows down to drive Right. You know that camera driven down and we're playing like on the list the album. I played them, I played those kind of driving around the car when I was they were just being produced. And it's cool when you see the visuals of one hand. Yeah, and all the things I've So now, I we did this uh, DNA test and we spit in a tube. It's called 23 and Me. And you send it out to me. I come to the back and I tell you your, your heritage, your ancestry. Stuff about you. For example, Sissy, tell them what you found out. So I found out that I am uh, like 30% Iberian and 60% European, 1% uh, Jewish, and 1% Italian. 1% Jewish. It was on and on and on. A religion. Yeah, and then, and then it connected yeah. me to like 1,200 <laughs> relatives. Get my spit back. Guess what I am? Irish. Third Irish. Yes. That's what I'm like. That's what I'm saying. Brothers. That's what my I'm brother. Saying. Yes. It is with great pride we celebrate your album today. Yes. Like As a fellow Irishman. As fellow Irish, I feel like a family member is giving birth today. <laughs> let's go for a pint of Guinness. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's go drink beer. And do things that we would do. I'm, Temple Bar. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> most expensive beer on the planet. Yeah. Um, I am, uh, I think I'm, from what I've gathered, I'm, I think I'm Irish. Now, what if he does his DNA test yeah. and now finds out yeah. that he's He's Swiss. Irish. Someone give me a cup. <laughs> <laughs> give me a cup quick. I spit all over. He's Swiss. Hey, speaking of, uh, just thinking about beer, Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Have, you, have you talked to him since he heard himself? No, I haven't like spoken to him. I want to find out what actually happened. Did he actually get knocked down? No, no, no. I, I think that was, seems to be a room. I think that's why he's not down. Let's make his arm break a lot worse than that. I reckon he just fell off the wagon. I think he must have fallen and he tried to catch himself with both arms because he broke his right wrist and fractured his elbow. Yeah, yeah. Left elbow. I mean, he'd be lost. The dead poor guy can't fall. 
to tour. Yeah, I heard he was meant to be doing the show as an age. In fairness, to be honest, he probably it's probably the right time for him. Probably needs a break. It seems like since <laughs> he needs a little breather. <laughs> it feels like since he came back in January, he has to stop doing shows. So oh, that's probably true. And he can do. It. Well, we hope to make sure Do people around you say, "Okay, Niall, no bike." Um, not not really, no. But I'm just. I don't do something. Yeah, I kind of doesn't get any more aggressive than golf for me. So, let's <laughs> <laughs> crash the buggy or something like that. <laughs> it's all pretty innocent. Well, we are thrilled. And by the way, tonight you can tune in. It is the iHeartRadio album release party tonight, 7 p.m. here on 102.7 Kiss FM, youtube.com slash iHeartRadio. You're going to go through all the stuff, all the music, yeah? Yeah, we're going to have a little event. It's going to be great. Tiny will be there. Tiny's heartstrings will be there. Jojo is going to be there. Yeah, he's an outsider, okay? He's not Irish, but he's, 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 he's an outsider. He's an outsider. We, he, we give, him, give him a 23andMe DNA test. Let's, let's make sure he's not Swiss. There we go. Good very well, please. Yeah, uh, then, we have, then we're calling my mother. Then yeah, I don't know what's happening. If, uh, if there's any family from Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> please, let us speak up now. We're in trouble. <laughs> Some mailman has something to say for <laughs> Uh, hey now, so proud of you, brother. Congratulations, man. This is awesome. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you a little bit later tonight here in this event. All right, coming back. It's three years ago, the Roses call. He confessed to his wife that he had a one-night stand with a co-worker and got her pregnant. We're going to talk to his wife next. It's a family. Holy. <laughs> now, I don't want to brag. And, and, you know, I, I don't want to brag. But obviously, Tom Brady has been listening to the show. And he heard that I'm not going on his diet, right? Because we we looked up his after the Super Bowl, everybody wanted to go, well, what's this guy eating? What's he doing? He had cotton every year. Right. Which right. Wins. Like he's such in yeah. such great shape. He's older for the NFL, so what's his program? And he eats most of the right? Mm-hmm. So I'm just first of all, Tommy, if you're up now, I'm sure you are working out or something. Thank you for listening. Magazine of himself. Oh, it's TV 12. That's right. That was up. It says uh, How to Do What You Love Better and for Longer by Tom Brady. Do you have more jewelry on today than you I do, and I'll get to that later in the show. (laughs) So, would you like for me to read the book aloud, or do you want me to give you a copy of it? I mean, it's a thick book, but uh, some highlights. Just before the start of the Patriots 2016 championship season, I went to a field in my house to throw the football with one of my dearest friends, my body coach, and the co-founder of the TV12 Method, Alex Guerrero, a former teammate as well. It was a brisk late summer afternoon. Perfect. Ooh. New England football weather. Actually, that pros. I mean, I was feeling that. It's like it's very lengthy. Oh, it's 300 pages. I don't think I'm going to get through it here. I'll just give you, you a You know what that reminded me of? When you and Ellen used to read out yes. of the Twilight book. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Back in the day. Roger, the security guard. It was then <laughs> that I heard the calling again. Bella. Bella. It was farther away this time. And sometimes it sounded like several voices were calling me. We should do it with this book. Oh, no, this book has different things. Didn't Roger get stuck in the tree? You did. Did I get stuck in the tree? It was you, yeah. There's a video somewhere online. My favorite. Listening to those. Was Roger the security guy? Was he Bella? Or was he uh, Robert Superhead? Edward. What's his name? You were Bella, and he was was Edward. I was Bella. He was saying, Bella, Bella. Yeah, Bella, Bella. Bella, Bella. <laughs> you, it was you. There's why video online. I, why was that out of the tree? This is her movie? Yeah, I mean, you just getting into it, yeah. Yeah, you were cosplaying. Role playing? You were just, you were, yeah, role playing, cosplaying. What's cosplay? When you dress up as a character and you become that character. Oh, oh cosplay? Mm-hmm. How do you spell that? C O S P A. 
<laughs> Let's go back to Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria Major Muscle is situated in the front chest. I mean, I can hear you. I'm pretty sure yeah. Tom Brady listens to the Elsie Show. No, we'll be talking to Alex, um, the the coach. I just read about him. Yeah. Nothing made me happier than seeing Tom a little bit tipsy after they won. Oh, really? Celebrating. He's on, like, he deserves the it. His friend was helping him walk. Do we have a way to actually No, probably not. We just uh, seltzer water. No, no way. <laughs> Ew, that would be so gross. No, I just figured with your buffet over there, you run this and have to stop. Yeah, come on, you know, get your little mini fridge. Just reading up this list you made of whether or not we're yeah. passive aggressive. I feel like FYI sometimes sounds passive aggressive, but I don't know any other way to say it. Like FYI we covered this or FYI we talked about it. I know what you mean. I'm a big FYI. I don't know if it is considered. It wasn't on this list, so well, maybe it does, it's okay. It, it, I mean, it seems on the border of passive aggression to me. Like a little You know what it but is? I don't it's know all caps too. Because you put it in all caps. No, no my phone does that. I don't do that my <laughs> Well, but, it, but in like quick, quick, like you're you're moving yeah. faster the day. Oh, FYI, FYI, we don't forget. Hold on. Covered, FYI, don't maybe, forget. Yeah. Why? Maybe just, just so you know. Oh, Takes too long to type. Type oh, yeah, that out. Oh, you don't roll your eyes at us. It is L O L P I Y. Yeah, you really type in the initials. Like we have to. Yeah. Middle. You don't even want to spell chuggy. All right, so what's on the list of the five phrases to avoid being passive-aggressive at work? All right, here's one of them. Per my last email. Oh, the worst. So what it actually means is saying that you didn't really read what I wrote. Pay attention this time. So I will admit that many times I don't read email. And then I ask a question about something, and then my reply is, yes, I told you that in the email I sent. But so I didn't, and instead of like looking to see if the email was there, I prefer to just ask the question again. Because you don't read emails. I don't like them. No. I don't like them. They're I know, always you had an auto reply on your email for like five years. Try me now, just took it off. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Why? Try me now. Just to change like, it. Why? It became too predictable. <laughs> now you'll send the email and I just won't reply. Oh my god. Right, what All right. Else? The next one is for future reference. We start an email out for future reference. Like, yeah, a little kind of aggressive. What it actually means is, let me correct your blatant mistake that you already knew was wrong. Yikes. I don't know. I mean, look, what other way are you supposed to say that? Hey, I, you could say, in the future, blah, blah, blah. Or yeah. going forward. Love it going forward. Going, going forward, forward. Going forward. forward. Yeah, yeah. All right, what else? Going forward is not better. Going forward is actually on the list as well. It's considered passive aggressive. It actually means... Do not ever do that again going forward. Right, let, let me speak for right. about the nuance. There's a fine line between being passive aggressive with some of these things and being clear. Like you need to be clear too, right? You want to avoid ambiguity when you're mm -hmm. when you're managing or when you're the employee or when you're working for somebody. Yeah. You want to be clear. So for clarity, I would say okay. going forward less. Blah blah blah. I don't hate going forward, and that was number five on the list, so I'm thinking maybe that it was not as intense as the other one, so I'm okay with going forward. The other two were bumping this to the top of your inbox. I prefer I that. I get these all the time. I love that. Thank you. I never thought they were, I never looked at them as passive aggressive. No, I look at them as thank you because you know I didn't read the first one. Now, what's the final one? But it totally is. Um, just to be sure we're on the same page, dot, dot, dot. Again, no issue with that. That's clarity for me. Like, just to make sure before we have this meeting with Dennis, we're all on the same page to say we don't want to go on until 2 p.m. Right? <laughs> but we we need to stop at, at some point. Sometimes you need to be assertive. So I get what you're saying. Sometimes you do need to say, you know, just to all be clear, we're on the same page. You need to be clear. I think but clarity is clear. Passive aggressive is like I'm trying not to sound like a, a, you know I'm being beanie, but I'm like 
like I'm being a meanie. Some of the best advice that I got early on in my career was never respond to an email angry or frustrated. And I used to do that sometimes. Well, hungry, sure. But like, you know what I mean? It's like you kind of just react so quickly and then that's it. Like once that email is sent, it's, you know, so you really, like if you're angry or you're frustrated with whatever the situation may be, take a beat, maybe sleep on it, respond in the morning. I try not to make big decisions when I'm tired, really tired. So for example, Mondays, because I work late Sunday night and work early Monday, I'm tired by the end of the day and that's when I get a chance to go through things. And I'm not good at decision making in that moment. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Ed Sheeran with us uh, today. Thanks for coming on. I, I've not seen or spoken to you in a long time, as it's been with so many people, but you look fantastic. Oh, thank you, man. Dude, I was just uh, I was just realizing today, I haven't actually done like a proper interview. I did like one with the BBC like a month ago. No, maybe about two weeks ago. But I haven't done, done one since February 2018. Wow. Well, this, this won't be that proper. I'll do my best, but I, I just appreciate the time. <laughs> So since, I guess, we last spoke, you became a dad. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a, quite a seismic shift in my life. It's been great. How has it impacted your, your daily life? Uh, do you know what? I kind of, I just, I mean, you know yourself, you just quite prioritize different things. Like, I, I got healthy and uh, sort of, like, just spent a lot of time at, at home. I didn't really do any music for about six months. I was just kind of, like, full-time dad and then... Um, yeah, when it kind of got to sort of six months point, I started doing studio time, but very like structured. Instead of like instead of like just working, I would like have a like nine to five, and I would do it at home and be able to, you know, I was doing <laughs> I was doing vocals with like her asleep on my shoulder or something like that. Oh, so, I love it was that. good. And and it is, you know, many artists that you know will talk about they get most creative overnight and they work all night long. Did you ever do that? So that's never that's never been the case with me. I, I always find nighttime sessions actually a bit uncomfortable because I get quite tired. So I, I've I've always been a, uh, a I sort of start start at ten and finish at five kind of thing. But now it's more like start at eight thirty, finish at four. So, so she she has heard maybe has heard your songs. How does she react? Uh, she's good. You know, she doesn't like she doesn't like the ones that are like the big like Delta singy ones. She kind of gets a bit a bit shocked by that. But she likes to sing. I, I wrote. There's one song on the uh, the album that's a very sort of like smooth lullaby, I guess, not like it. soothing. Yeah, she likes that one. Are you a hands-on dad? Are you are you changing diapers? Are you doing fully? All yeah, fully. You know what? I, I found I found you know like my wife sometimes kind of went through so much to have a you know it's like a it's like a big thing that like. The one thing the man can do is change nappies, cook, clean, <laughs> keep, keep. So yeah, that's that. That's literally been from from the start. I've been like fully, fully doing that. Um, I love that. Yeah. Is nappies diapers? Nappies diapers. Yeah, yeah. Nappies diapers. Yeah, yeah. Nappy diapers. Okay. I'm gonna use that one day. I like that <laughs> nappy. Sissy's actually pregnant with her third right now. I am pregnant. I got one. Oh wow! Oh, congratulations. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I just entered the third trimester, so I know it's gonna get like. More tough, but uh, yeah, now? for sure. The thing that uh, the thing that I never got my head around was the weeks thing, you know, because I usually it's just like oh a month and a bit or like two months and a bit. Someone's being like oh it's twenty seven weeks. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wait till yeah. I mean, how old is your daughter? Oh, Lyra's is nine. Uh, nine months. Nine. Nine months. <laughs> Guys, don't you call babies weeks for a while with your daughter? Yeah, you do weeks for a while, and then it turns into months. Once they're like two, you really stop. Yeah. You really stop counting the months. But you, you apparently have this this uh, this thing for math, so you should be really good at all the math. Ed, we've we've seen <laughs> the jerseys of the football team. No, I know. I, do you know what? My albums are called that, but I'm actually not. I'm not a very smart individual. I kind of like I've got like I've got my. Uh, um, parts of life that you know I, I feel like I can navigate but in terms of like maths I'm not like I wasn't good at that at school or okay. languages although, although I, I learned uh, Italian in the uh, in the pandemic which was uh, uh, the one thing that I feel like I got got out of it I have a house in in Italy and every time I'd gone to Italy I just found like the locals were like yeah but you haven't learned yet have you and I'm like no no I will I will and then I it's, it, 
yeah, I just decided that I was going to do it. So I do an hour a day. I've done that for about wow. 10, 10 months. Come stay. Come stay. Yeah, so many. Hey, too. Very, very. Grazie mille. I started. Io sono. Io sono Ryan. Di dove? Uh, io sono Ed, uh, io ho imparato un po' italiano ogni giorno, uh, uh, mia bella l'insegnante Daniela è, uh, yeah, it's good. Much better than mine. I started <laughs> yeah, taking wow. them once a week during the pandemic, the Italian lessons, and I felt yeah. it, I'm still doing it, I struggled so hard, I got re like really frustrated at some point, it was very hard for me to, to get the muscle moving. Yeah, dude, for me it was like, I kind of like got that my grasp on like conversation and then uh, my teacher was like, right, now we're going to do past tense. And I was like, oh, and now I'm in, I'm in that at the moment and it's like a completely new language again. But it's really, it's really, I never learned, I failed German at school, I failed French at school, like I've never really learned languages and I've sort of spent the work, spent the last 10 years traveling the world speaking English and feeling quite embarrassed about being in all these wonderful cultures and not not being able to communicate so it's, it's really cool to uh, it sort of feels like a uh, a key that you unlock this door and then suddenly this whole world opens up to you. It is, it is yeah. an interesting thing that you've been in all these nations and territories singing in English with others singing back in English who may not yeah. even speak English. Yeah, man, it, and it's, uh, it's uh, I think it's a respect thing to even like it when you're in these different countries, just to at least learn like, hey, how are you doing oh, yeah. tonight? Like, you ever get nervous about country. that? That you screwed that part up? Because I'd be so nervous about that. Uh, do you know, it's, I think because we spend at least like a month in each place, like if you go to Germany, we play like 15 to 20 shows. So by the end of it, you've got it, you've got, you it, got down. it down. Your new song is called Bad Habits. We don't yep. know much about anything, um, <laughs> I, so I don't even know where to start, but let, let's, let's backtrack to, is the album called Minus? The album is not called Minus, no, the album okay. is not called Minus. All will be revealed in time. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, been a, mate, it's been a cool process. I kind of like recorded close to 250 songs for two albums, and um, I have been sort of whittling this album down, and I feel like I've got to the point where I'm, I'm happy. This first single, Bad Habits, is like the most different song that I've ever Why made. Is it different? It's like, you know, it's the first time that I've made a dance tune. It's the first time I've made a, like, a, gone like fully all out. And it's, uh, do you know, it got to January and in England there was like an announcement that England was going to open up in June. And I had the first single already planned and I was kind of like, let me go back in the studio and make, because the first single I had was quite sort of lo-fi, sad. Um, and I was like, let me see if I can make something upbeat that, you know, because I'm going to be wanting to go to clubs in the summer and what would I want to hear? So I, um, yeah, I basically made a, a tune that hopefully fits in with the world opening up. But you kind of chuckle when you say you made a dance record. Is that because it was so out, like out of your comfort zone at first? Well, it's not, I, you know, it's not like full David Guetta, Calvin Harris. It's just, uh, it, but, but no, it's like super, super out of my comfort zone. Like, uh, but for me, when I did uh, sing, on Multiply, I was like super nervous about putting that out. I was like, oh, this is so different. What are my fans going to think? And I put it out and people liked it. And then the same, same thing with Shape of You. Like Shape of You, I was so against, so against. I was like, I don't want to put this out. My fans will hate it. And I put it out and it's my biggest song that I've had. And um, so with, with this one, I'm, I have the same feeling, which I think is good. I think it's good. To, I'm very, very nervous about it, but also like everyone that I've been playing it to. Because also the other thing with being sort of uh, isolated making a record is usually I would like meet up with people and we'd have a few beers and I'd play music and they'd be like oh we like this one we like this one we don't like this one but it's only really been my wife that I've been playing them to and she's like you know like uh, uh, we, she likes my music so like I pick a favorite baby so so with this one I'm kind of getting validation from it once it's we shot the video and it's chosen, I'm getting kind of feeling my confidence is growing in it. The more I play it to people, now I'm out in um, you know I'm out in America now, which is fantastic. I'm so sad we can't do this in person, but um, hopefully we can do that uh, next time I'm back. You're, you're, you're welcome to. I'm here for hours. You're welcome to stroll by. It looks like we might be in the same location. Uh, I think you're probably across the street or something. Yeah. But I, I know I know there's like certain <laughs> protocols or whatever. Ed Sheeran is with us. All right, so the album is not minus. Is it called Subtract or Take Away or any of those <laughs> synonyms? Do you know what? If you look at the Ipswich Town football shirt, yeah. uh, it's on. It's on there. It's, it's on. on there.
It's on there. I just don't want to. I don't want to announce Deduct. it yet because I because okay. I've Deduct. got the uh, I've got the uh, I've got I've got the single as the focus, and then like later on in the year I'll announce the album. I'll bring out another single. I kind of like do it like that rather than blow my. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, I hope to see you in person next time then. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So, just before you go, Bad Habits, we are going to get it very soon. I know it's something we'll all hear. Uh, you say it's it's a beat. The lyrics, are they about Bad Habits that you broke, that you had, that one would break? That I had, yeah. Uh, well, and 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 have. I think, I think you know, the, the, the concept of the tune was basically like when a Friday night starts, you have the best intentions in the world. You go, right, I'm going to go out, I'm going to have one beer. You know, I've, I've, eat, I've eaten a salad for dinner, you know, it's all going to be good. And then next thing you know, it's like two o'clock in the morning, you're shot in mezcal and eating a, like, a McDonald's <laughs> burger. You know, like, it's like, it's just basically bad bad habits lead to other bad habits. So it was yeah. that, it, that's that's the concept of the song. And the, and the music video is um, me and my wife uh, binge watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer again in um, the pandemic. And I was like, I was like, oh, I should make a vampire music video at some point. And then when I wrote the song, I was like, Vampires' bad habits come out at night. Our bad habits come out at night, and so it's 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 all that. But it's a very uh, very flamboyant video. I'm in a I'm in a bright pink Versace suit. I've got glitter on my eyes, fangs. I've dyed my hair blonde. It's 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 a whole thing. I'm looking at your post of it right now. It looks like you're also vertically like up three or four feet in the air. Yeah, I'm yeah. Saying. I uh, do you know what? I'm I can't dance at all. But when I put that suit on, I was like, <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. Get in it. Oh man, hey, it's so great to see you. I really so can, great to see you guys. I, I can I can sense the happiness in your life. So congratulations on all fronts, bro. Thank you, man. I feel like yeah, life is uh, life is good. Life is good. And uh, dude, I'm so happy to see you, you guys. And congratulations on uh, the incoming Thank baby. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, Hope to good see stuff. You. Dude, I'll be back. I'll be back the ne next month, the month after, month after. When whenever you guys can do in person, I'll be I'll be there. Great. Ned Sheeran, yeah. Bad Habits, out June 25th. Take good care. We'll come. Now, I don't want to brag. And, you know, I, I don't want to brag. But obviously, Tom Brady has been listening to the show. And he heard that I was kind of going on his diet, right? Because we, we looked up his... After the Super Bowl, everybody went to, you know, well, what's this guy eating? What's he doing? Yeah, it happens every year. Right. Time right. He wins. Like, he's such a, yeah. he's such great shape. He's older for the NFL. So, what's his program? And he eats mostly of right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm just... First of all, Tom, if you're up now, I'm sure you are working out or something. Thank you for listening. Because he's still over <laughs> a, 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 a magazine of himself. Oh, it's TV12. Oh, wow. That's right. Yeah, what's up? It says, uh, how to do what you love better and for longer. Hey. By Tom Brady. Do you have more, more jewelry on today than usual? I do, and I'll get to that later in the show. <laughs> so, would you like me to read the book aloud, or would you want me to give you a copy? I mean, it's a thick book, but uh, some highlights. Take Just highlight. before the start of the Patriots 2016 championship season, I went to a field in my house to play the football with one of my dearest friends, my body coach, and the co-founder of the TB12 Method, Alex Guerrero, a former teammate as well. It was a brisk late summer afternoon. New England football weather. Actually, that pros. Yeah, I was feeling that. It was looking very lengthy. Oh, it's 300 pages. I don't think I'm going to get through it here. I'll just give you, you guys a You know what copy. that reminded me of? When you and Ellen used to read out yes. of the Twilight book. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Back in the day. Roger, the security guard. It was then <laughs> that I heard the calling again. Bella. Bella. It was farther away this time. And sometimes it sounded like several voices were calling me. Bella, we should do it with this book. Bella. Oh no, this book has different things. Didn't Roger get stuck in the tree? You did. Something. Did I get stuck in the tree? It was you, yeah. There's a video oh, somewhere online. Really my favorite. Listening to those. What was Roger the security guy? Was he Bella? Or was he uh, Robert Scissorhands? What's his name? You were Bella, and he I was, was Bella. Edward. I, I was yeah. Bella, and he would say, Bella, Bella. Yeah, Bella, Bella. Yeah, Bella, Bella. <laughs> and who was out in the tree? You, it was you. There's Why video was online. Why was I out in the tree? You seen for the movie? I mean, you're getting into it, yeah. Yeah, you were cosplaying. Role-playing? You were, you were, yeah, role-playing, cosplaying. 
cosplay. When you dress up as a character and you become that character. Oh, oh cosplay? Mm-hmm. How do you spell that? C O S K. Let's go back to Edward Scissor. <laughs> The pictorial major muscle is situated in the front chest. I mean, I, I, I'll get you a copy. Anyway, pretty sure Tom Brady listens because he also said, oh, chocolate protein powder. For yeah, days. get it. So, Yum. Anyway, thank you. And, and if it wasn't Tom, it's probably his PR people that run this you know. whole method. But, uh, no, we'll be talking to Alex, um, the, the coach, soon. I just read about this. Yeah. Nothing made me happier than seeing Tom a little bit tipsy after they won the Smaller Celebrity. He deserves it. His friend was going to be the mob. So do we have a way to... Okay. It, it, it seems on the border of passive aggressive to me, like a little. You know what it is? It's the all caps it. too, because you put it in all oh, caps. Yeah. No, my yeah, phone does like, that. I don't do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> FYI, it's a little. It's a little well, but but in like quick quick time, like you're you're moving yeah. faster today. Oh, FYI, I don't forget. Oh, FYI, I don't forget. Yes. Just so you know. Take too long to type. Oh, you don't roll your eyes with us. It is L O L D I Y. Yeah, you can type in the initial. Like, we have the. Yeah. Like, it's little. Really, what's called Chugi? So, what's on the list of the five phrases to avoid being passive aggressive at work? All right, here's one of them. Per my last email. Oh, the worst. So, what it actually means is saying that you didn't really read what I wrote. Pay attention this time. So, I will admit that. Many times I don't read email, and then I ask a question about something, and then my reply is, yes, I told you that in the email I sent. But so yeah. I didn't, and instead of like looking to see if the email was there, I prefer to just ask the question again. Because you don't read emails. I don't like them. Well. I don't.